Big Footy Port Adelaide podcast is proudly sponsored by New Vision. My team, Kanda, power. I love the power. power, power. I love the power. power, power. Hi everyone and welcome to the Big Footy Port Adelaide podcast, a show about all things Port Adelaide Footy Club. I'm your host, Macca19, and joining me as always, as co-host, we've got Fishing Rick. Macca, mate. mate. How Come exciting. On. Crazy. What a weekend it's going to be. I'm excited. Yes. I, know. I don't even want to talk about the rabble, but um, isn't it, uh, you know, is there actually games of footy on this week? It's amazing. It's, uh, it's mildly amusing. We won't talk Crazy. about it any more than that. No. But how exciting. Two teams, finals, one in the last week of the finals, second last week of the finals. Who would have thought at the, at the beginning of the year? Well, this is just about the biggest weekend for uh, for Port Adelaide, I reckon. In a long time. In a very long time. Anyway, we do have a guest on this podcast as well. Um, it's his first time. We're speaking with Magpie's Power. Hi, boys. Uh, be gentle with me. This is uh, <laughs> um, glad to be here. This is probably my biggest big footy honour, except for maybe getting a like from Linda Lodes on one post. Oh, there you go. Oh, yeah. Right. I've got the lube. <laughs> I'll go easy. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> well, as you're uh, you're the newcomer on the podcast, let's find out about uh, how you came to support Port Adelaide. Well, my um, family is split down the line, Port Central's. So I grew up uh, with brothers and sisters trying to convert me either way. But it just so happened the old man took me to the footy and um, he was a Port supporter. So from about 1980, we've been uh, going on the footy and... Um, Barrack of a port ever since. Fantastic. That's the way. Good time to start following the footy. It was, wasn't it? Mm. It was. We've had a pretty charm run since then, so I can't complain too much. That's it. No, no. So since 1980, hey, what's your favourite match in that time? Oh, I'll stay away from the finals and grand finals because, uh, well, there too been, been too many great ones and it's a bit of a cheat, so... Uh, I'll go with in the SA NFL, the Anthony Williams match. I think yes, nineteen eighty eight when yep. down by four goals at half time and get up by four points and Georgie makes that big diving save in the last quarter and yep. yeah, that's when we were back. I think that's when um we became a real McCoy. Point. Yeah, I think so. Mm. Real deal, and I think in the AFL. Oh, it's pretty hard to go past that last showdown at Footy Park. That was just something out of control. It was uh, it was great being there around those crow supporters. It was fantastic. <laughs> <That's the way. laughs> what about your favourite player? Well, I think um, there's a lot of similarities with my favourite current and past player. They're both pretty smooth movers, really creative, love a run and bounce, and they both were 21. So it's uh, Brattles and... Public, they're my um, nice. they're my favourites, definitely. Brattles. What a great player! Fantastic, absolutely. Player. Mm. And he's a he's a player that I guess sometimes we forget as Port supporters. I mean, he, he still played a hundred games for Port Adelaide. It's amazing what he did with his career. Mm. Yeah, and he won three best and Ferris in I think four full seasons or something ridiculous. So yeah, still got his number on the back of my duffel coat. Just fits. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, it's a, it's been a pretty strange um, series of events, but we've actually gained a player this late in the season um, due to the TV show The Recruit, which is on Fox. Um, have you guys been watching that at all? Not at all. I haven't seen one episode. There you go. Sorry, yeah, you, I've, <laughs> I've got to say, uh, I can't. I'm leaving you out, hanging out to dry here, Mecca. No, I haven't, I haven't watched it at all either. My kids watch it, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, we've picked up um, a young lad by the name of Johan Wagner, um, who I believe went through the Port Junior system, played under-17s for Port Adelaide. Um, he's currently 23, he's 190 centimetres, around about 88 kilos. Um, he's a pretty quick sort of forward flanker, similar to maybe a Paul Stewart or a, an early career Steve Johnson um, in sort of game style and, and attributes. Um, he's actually played two senior games for Central Districts this year, nearly did his knee in his second match. Um, came back uh, after a, a couple of month layoff and, and had some games in the reserves as well. Um, what do you think of this? It's, a, it's quite an interesting scenario. Yeah, I mean, 
free player, I guess. We can't, uh, yeah, we'll see how it pans out. He, he was on double A just before, um, and he said he's uh, still coming back from that knee and he's a bit behind it. So, but yeah, he reckons Matty White is a, um, a good reference for him yep. or to live up to. So, did you mention the station that we don't mention on this oh, podcast? <laughs> That's right. What's I'll going on here? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a it's a novel co- concept, isn't it? I mean, it, it gives players another another avenue and and hope to the AFL, and uh, yeah, it's uh, it's quite exciting for him. And good on him for not taking an easier option and maybe selecting GWS or Gold Coast to hope and try and get an easy game. He's He's gone with the club that he he wanted to go and go to, and you know, and we've taken him. And ironically, my my son's mate's mum, brother, that's his son. So, <laughs> you know, through some lineage. So, yeah, so yeah. I said to Jackson, find out if he can come on the podcast. <laughs> Fifteen degrees so, of separation there, Rick. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so I've got Jackson working on it for us, Macca. We'll see how we go, but. Yeah. Yeah, it's exciting. And the good thing is I think the AFL covers his contract as well, don't they? Yeah, yeah I think so. they do, it's a, particularly in the first year. I think um, I think he gets paid for. So he's only a Cat B rookie, so he's the same as uh, Daniel Flynn. Um, whether, I mean, what would your expectations be? Well, play SA in a field league, I guess, mm. to start with, yeah. and just show what you can do from there. I mean, yeah. well, what is he, a half forward? So a half forward, yeah. <laughs> He's uh, he's in for an almighty battle. He's going to have to be a uh, a very very high quality player to to break into the side. But I guess you know that's what you want, isn't it? That's what you want. Yep. Look, I think uh, my expectations aren't too high. I mean, you, you've got to be a bit realistic. And look, I think at the very least he's going to become a, a decent quality SANFL player. I think he's. I really like his attributes. He's super quick. He's got pretty decent skills. Um, you know, he's, he's strong. He's tall. He can take a good mark. Um, so, look, if he can do that, then that's a great start, I think. We've got the power to win, power to roll. Come on, Port Adelaide aggression. We are the power from Port. Well, look, let's talk about the big event this weekend, which is uh, Port versus Hawthorne this Saturday at the MCG. It's the preliminary final. Uh, the last time we met in finals, it, uh, it wasn't a good one. It was the 2001 semi-final at, uh, at uh, Amy Stadium, where we lost by three points, I think. Um, I guess first things first, what are your expectations? A hard battle. That's mm-hmm. what I'm expecting. A close game. Uh, I, I'm quietly confident we're not going to get blown out of the water. And uh, hopefully we're, we're in it to win it and the... Or if not, won it coming into the last quarter. Yeah, I think it's going to be a definitely a struggle. Although I'm strangely I'm more confident this week than I was last week against Rio. Yeah, I'm with you there. I've got the same feeling. Yeah, so I'm, I mean, if you're you're the same, if you're the same as me, I'm not saying I'm not correlating that to oh, I think we're going to win. But yeah, I, I didn't I didn't give us much chance at all. I had a really bad vibe for a little while there against Rio, but. For some reason, I feel like we can take it up to Hawthorne. Definitely. I think um, the great thing about the Hawks is you're a chance against them because they let you play as well without, um, you know, they, of course, the pressure and they're a great team and all that sort of stuff. But, but Freo is like playing against 22 purple bowl constrictors. They just, they never let it up. So, That's right. Well, look, how did we what, win last time? Because we did beat them earlier this year. Um, it was a very, very good game at Adelaide Oval. Um, how did we get over the line against them last time? Well, I thought we played high quality football, to state the obvious. Um, we were we were in our rich vein of form, and uh, yeah. we were able to take it uh, to Hawthorne with pure skills. We matched them in the skills department, uh, but I thought we were a little bit um, a little bit more accurate. Obviously, Hawthorne were lacking a bit of polish. They uh, they were ma- missing some massive massive. Uh, key players in their lineup, which obviously would have made a little bit of a difference to their performance. But I think they're one of those teams where it's all about structure more so than players. So um, and I, I just found that uh, they're, they're fantastic with setting up their zones uh, and we were able to take take that on those. So 
So no matter how quick they were able to set up their zonal presses that were ever on the ground, we took the game to them and applied, applied the pressure, uh, causing some turnovers, which resulted in us getting the, uh, the easier scores. I think uh, last time, the thing that I thought we did really, really well was that we used our pace through the corridor. We, we played very direct. Um, we attacked them physically. It was a very high-pressure game, lots of strong tackling. Um, and we played a pretty open forward line, which worked to our advantage, I think. And I think the, the one thing that you know that Hawthorne are going to do is they're going to hit their targets. They're the best skilled team in the league, either by hand or by foot, um, in the clear or under pressure, long or short. They're going to hit those targets every single time. And the thing that was interesting last time we played them um, was that we actually lost pretty much every single um, stat category you could possibly think of, except for the scoreboard. Wow. <laughs> I mean, they, they beat us in disposals, they beat us in tackles, inside 50s, clearances, hit-outs, contested marks, marks inside 50s, everything. So I haven't right. seen Hawthorne live for a few years, and I, I really noticed it um, at Adelaide Oval um, compared to TV. Uh, their game style in the big games um, is their weapon, but it's also um, their weakness because it's almost a little bit defensive, because it's amazing how their positioning when they don't have the ball, no matter where they are on the ground or if they have the ball, I'll, I'll restructure that. If if they've got the ball, their positioning with the players, not in the play, is in a position where if there's a turnover on their behalf, their players are almost in this zonal position within about two seconds. Yep. So, But that sort of defensive mindset with the way they structure up also allows that it sort of keeps the opposition in the game a little bit as well. Well, that's what I noticed anyway. So it's an it's an interesting game for us on Saturday, which was what I was saying before. Because I think in a way, if Hawthorne take that sort, same sort of game plan, which I anticipate they would, it will give us an opportunity to stay in the game. And hence, I think it was on TV tonight. You know, they've their last three pre- preliminary finals have all been within a kick. Mm. So, you know, they they play to a, a game style which keeps them in the game but also keeps the opposition in the game as well. Mm. Does that make sense? It does. It does. Absolutely. And we are facing a, a pretty different team to what we did face um, in round 12. I mean, I guess the, the four main inclusions for them will be Roughhead, Mitchell, Gibson and Lake. Um, so that's a lot of quality, a lot of finals experience that they're bringing into their team, which, we didn't, which they didn't have last time we played them. Yeah, There's two players there. Yeah. Uh, Sorry, mate. I was, I'll, I'll introduce you to this this question, uh, Maggie. With the, there's two players there which I don't think is as important as the other two, and I think that's Lake and, and Gibson uh, from the perspective of they're not really the players that are going to probably nullify our small forwards. And, you know, I think that's where if we're going to win the game, our small forwards are going to be one of the keys. Mm. Yeah, that's where we've got a bit of a, a mismatch with them, don't we? We can um, exploit that, hopefully. Well, I guess yeah, with, uh, with Mitchell back, that allows Sean Burgoyne to play back on someone like a wing guard or a Robbie Gray. Um, that's probably uh, one of the bonuses for them, I would think. Absolutely. And who's more influential these days, boys? Do you find Mitchell more influential than Lewis or is, is Lewis more influential than Mitchell now? I guess uh, Lewis has had a better year, hasn't he? The old Australian and... But that's a that's a nice um, luxury, isn't it? Having those two and um, uh, um, Chuck Luke Hodge in there as well. He, um, I think he's my pick out of all three of them. Hodge. I think statistically, Sam Mitchell has had um, an equitable year to Jordan Lewis, but he's missed you know eight games with injury or something like that. But yeah. I mean, Lewis is a is a fair shot for the Brownlow. He's he's rightly up there as one of the favourites. Yeah, and he destroyed us last time. He had 34 touches and two goals or something. So he nearly um, solely got them over the line. Mm. The reason I ask that is because I'm wondering, do we maybe change our mentality for the first time in a long time and instead of putting Kane on on Mitchell, do a do a role that we did last week where um, Ollie Wines went on the Nate Fife and play Ollie Wines and use his strength against Mitchell, both inside players, and maybe send Kane to Lewis to try and lock down Lewis's influence. I'd be happy with that. Mm-hmm. 
Will we look at Ebo for maybe Lewis or to run with him? I don't know if we want that unaccountability, though. And I, I don't mean that in a bad way from Ebo, but Ebo's going to still try and get his own ball. I, yeah. I just wonder if we need to just respect Lewis completely as a player uh, for how he's influencing a game and just really try and lock him down out of the game. Mm. Yep. Definitely. I mean, I'd probably have Ebert go up against someone like Sean Burgoyne. Try and hurt him mm. the other way. Which I think can happen because Sean's sort of a similar type of player, isn't he? Yeah. The advantage with that match up too is Sean's going to be probably a little bit more positioned in the defensive half. So that will give Brad more of an opportunity to run forward and, and try and create that loose player or spare player in there on the wing and in the forward line. Mm. Was it last so, year when uh, when Sean kicked three goals in the last quarter against Geelong? I hope he um, stays in that back half. Mm, absolutely. <laughs> he, was, he was definitely the match winner in that prelim for them. Um, I guess one of the main issues, and that's going to be something that we're going to have to deal with, is the fact that Hawthorne rarely lose at the MCG. They've won 15 of their last 16 there, including the last 10 games straight. Well, they're just a dominant side, though, aren't they? So they're going to have those sort of statistics. It's a bit like Frio at Patterson's. Hmm. I mean, what were they, 22 or 23 before last week? Yeah, I think so. Something like that. Yeah. Yep. So, I mean... When you're an informed side and you've been dominating, you're going to have great records at, at, at grounds and, you know, and Hawthorne play there quite often. So it's so obviously uh, that's going to match up. But I, don't, I still don't think that's going to be a massive deterrent for us. And I'm quite happy with the fact that it's at the MCG over Etihad. I think that's a big win for us. And obviously it was never going to be at Etihad anyway. And um, I think the other plus for us is that it's at 4.45. Now, is it going to be a dry day on Saturday? That's the million-dollar question. Clearing share on 18. Yeah, so it'll be, it should be dry. Yep. So <laughs> what is it for us this week? Is it going to be the standard midfield that's going to be the key driver for us winning, or is it going to be the defensive six or the forward six? Where Where's that main influence need to come from this week? Yeah, I, I want to look in the, the best players on Sunday morning and just see all played well. It's uh, it's going to have to be all over the ground, isn't it, really? Mm. I think um, midfield's going to be key, but for me, I think it's going to have to be our defence, which really um, stands up this week. And, and, uh, and if they can do a good job, I think that'll, that'll win us the game. I mean, they've just got so many options up there. I mean, yeah. you look at Gunson, you look at Roughhead, you look at Luke Bruce, um, you know, Jordan Lewis kicks goals. Brad Hill kicks goals, Sean Burgoyne kicks goals, you know, David Hale can Hale. play up there. I mean, yeah. they, they've got so many different options and they can probably stretch our defence a bit um, in, in terms of height. Um, but they've also got the small goal kickers as well. So I think um, it's definitely going to have to be our defence which will win us the game. They can we expect yeah, and, uh, off dropping back a fair bit, you reckon? Well, hopefully it not depends too how much. the game starts, really. I mean, yeah. yeah. I, I certainly wouldn't want him going there too early unless we, we find ourselves sort of three goals down in the first 10 minutes. Because mm-hmm. it takes away from our forward line, and that's what affected us with Frio, where that first half we didn't have really any half, uh, half forward line. We, we were lacking that tall presence to go to. So, you know, if we panic and, and start chucking him back defensive uh, side of centre too often, too quickly... Um, you know, it could cause us to break down again. The last thing we want to do is break down against Hawthorne and, and have a similar start to what we did against Frio. So, I mean, that's that's probably the, the most fundamental thing for us, that we come out firing right from the beginning. Yeah, for sure. You know, we can't be sloppy. And I mean, I, you know, I, I noticed someone say on the thread today, oh, we're lucky we don't, you know, it's a good thing we don't have McAvoy playing. But, you know, David Hale's no mug of a player and, He's a good rutman and he does well when he goes up forward. So uh, I wouldn't be uh, just taking it for granted that, um, you know, Lobie's going to have an easy game against uh, against Hale, who's a very, very handy and performing rutman. Well, Siegler's yeah. probably their main ruck. And the reason why McAvoy's not playing is because he's been in horrible form. I mean, he, if he mm. can't, he can't um, knock Segler out of the team. So, you know, good on uh, Jonathan Segler. He's, uh, he's in fantastic form and he's showing himself to be a, a pretty handy ruckman. Mm. Hale always goes up and gets that sneaky goal 
and if yes. he's not doing that, he's always dragging the other ruckman forward as well. So, yeah, Loby's going to have a fair bit of work to do, I think. Mm. So who goes to Roughhead? Who goes to Gunston? You'd, I'd always look at putting Homsch on Gunston. I think you know they're they're similar sort of matchup. You know, free moving, uh, uh, pretty uh, flowing players. So I like Homsch uh, going to Gunston, and obviously well, he went on uh, him last time. And um, Gunston took ten marks and kicked three goals, but a lot of people thought Homsch was uh, sort of in our in our top three best on ground that day as well. Yeah, so. You wouldn't think so with those that sort of performance, but um, but I just think it, it to me it looks like a natural matchup with um, and then you've obviously got Alipati on roughhead with uh, Jacko taking uh, Hale if he's resting up forward. I, I'd assume. Yep. That's how I would look at it anyway. Mm. That was pretty good. I mean, roughhead's the big key. He's a huge player. Mm. So what about our two all Australian midfielders? Are they? Are they going to be starting in the centre square at the first bounce? Because obviously we really lacked uh, drive last week for the first quarter after the first two minutes. So how are we going to structure up in the in the midfield for uh, for the first quarter of this game? I think it will probably be Boke, Robbie and Ollie um, in the square to start with, I would think. Yep. So where's, where, where do we tuck Hamish? Half-back line? Mm, on a wing, I think. Yeah. I've got to say, Hamish, I've been so impressed with his um, his hardball gets the last month and the, his contested marking, especially in the defensive half. He's uh, He's been very influential there, so I just wonder if maybe uh, we drop him back. I really hope in a way as well that maybe we start O'Shea on the bench this week and not on the ground because... I know he ended up having a good game, but he did seem to be a bit stay, starstruck at the beginning of the last week. So I wonder if maybe starting him on the bench and letting him settle into the game might not be a bad thing. So you got, we've got Ali Paddy on Gunston, um, on um, Roughhead. We've got Homsch on Gunston. We've got Jacko on Hale. So that leaves Bruce. I mean, is Bruce probably going to be a little bit too clever for Jasper? Even though Jasper's a smart guy and can play on anybody, I just wonder, you know... Are you is questioning it, yeah. Jasper Pittard? Really? <laughs> no, at all. I'm just, this I'm is just a landmark how moment. How we are we wasting Jas- Jasper's magnificent talents on playing him on Bruce? Is there a more important player that he should be playing on? Like, I don't know, Luke Hodge, perhaps. Playing well, a like, O'Shea out. might go to Bruce. That's always an option. But. Yeah, could be. I mean, Sean Burgoyne sort of turned himself into a bit of a big game player. So, um, I mean, <laughs> how many names are there? You know, you got, as you said before, you got Luke Hodge, you got Sean Burgoyne. It's just an amazing, it's going to be an amazing game. That's right. How I still are we feeling about this best. one? Are we optimistic? Are we uh, a little bit nervous? I'm quietly confident. Um, I think uh, we're definitely in for a big show and, ooh, yeah, bring it on. I think. Uh, I think yeah, I don't know. I I don't want to say we're going to get up in case we in case they jinx us, but very confident. Well, sort of. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the most it. sit on the fence answer I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> well, look, I am confident, Macca. I don't. It's not. It, obviously, you can't just come out and go. This is a lay down win. Um, you know, even though I thought Melbourne games were lay down wins, and we just got over the line. So uh, who bloody knows in football? But <laughs> if we can win our even share of football in the middle, it's all going to. To me, it's all going to come down to our small forwards. I think yeah. they could be the difference between the two sides, in my opinion. That's fair enough. They had and a big game last small, week. Our small forwards had a massive game last week, didn't they? Wingard's back to fantastic form. Robbie Gray in that third quarter we spoke about. Um, even Angus Momfrey seems to be moving a lot more freer again. Um, Matty White's just, um, you know, fantastic running down the wing. Mm. So, um, yeah, they're, they're going to be our X factors as far as I'm concerned. And I'm looking for a big game from Andrew Moore this week. Yeah, well, look, it's, um, 
Our small forwards is where we did the damage last time. They kicked 10 goals between them. Monfries kicked uh, four goals. Chatty Wingard, three. Robbie Gray, two. And Kane Mitchell, one. So I think if we get 10 goals from that group, um, again, you know, obviously we're swapping Jakey Need in for, for Mitchell. But if we get 10 goals from that group this week, we'd be a huge chance of winning this game. Definitely. Do you think we'd have to use the wise head of Angus Monfries uh, up forward against maybe Luke Hodge? I would play Monfries on Birchall um, and follow him around, and I'd probably play Tommy Jonas on Hodge, to be honest. What, just roam him? Yeah, just as, as a pure tagging role. Yeah. So do you think Hawthorne might go a little bit old school here? And, uh, you know, if we do start to take control of the game a bit, do you think they're going to maybe try and get in the boys' heads and, uh, and rough them up a little bit and try and distract them from playing the game? Yeah, well, they've got those sorts of players that um, they can definitely do that. I would think um, they will be hoping to be sort of three or four goals up pretty early on um, so they can sort of shut down the game a little bit. Um, you know, if we get a run on, um, you never know. I think it might get a bit physical. Mm. And the Hawks might start off with a bit of niggle. I don't think Hodge will be able to help himself, will he? No. Not at all. <laughs> and then you got Brian Lake, then you got Sammy Mitchell. I mean, they all like to uh, to throw their elbows around a little bit, so... Strangle people. Mm, or strangle people, yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> or fall over like they've been shot and get people suspended, so... Oh, you're, you're talking about Hill again. <laughs> and Mitchell. <laughs> mm. yes. Look, I'm pretty optimistic about this game, you know, and that scares me because I don't really like being all that optimistic about footy games, but... Every time I'm optimistic, we tend to lose. So I don't know how I feel about this one. No. I hate the saying, but really we've got nothing to lose, do we? Well, we've got everything to lose, really. Yeah. But from a credibility perspective, we've got nothing to lose. From a from a performance perspective, we've still got stuff to lose. But, I mean, if we were to drop out now, you know, the media is still going to love us. Yeah. And everyone's going to go, well... Geez, they tried hard. They've had a great season. You know, no one expected us to go this far. Um, you know, and Hawthorne's just a super great side. So that's what. So when I say we've got nothing to lose, we've got nothing to lose from our credibility. You know, whereas if Hawthorne lose, um, you know, questions are start going to be asked. Are they getting old? Is what's going to happen in the future? You know, I noticed that that was brought up tonight with Robbo on three hundred and sixty about Sydney if they don't make the grand final. Um, but as supporters in a playing group and a club, obviously we've got everything to lose because mm. who doesn't want to make a grand final? Absolutely. That's it. Well, look, let's go on to the four questions. Time to stand up. Rick, I'll start with you, mate. Yeah, I'm going to say our small forwards. As I said a couple of times already, I, mm -hmm. I really think, and as you just said before, they're going to be our, our difference. So... I want our small forwards to stand up again like last time we played them and like they did last week and really exert an influence. And I want to see Jakey Need fist pump after a goal. It'll be in front of <laughs> 80,000. Know, he seems to love that big game atmosphere, doesn't he, Jakey Need? Uh, well, I guess besides the, the bland, boring everyone, um, <laughs> I, think, uh, I think maybe Hoff and, and Loby really going to have to work, uh, work back a bit just to try to uh, cancel out the Hawks up forward. Yep. So they might have to be um, do a fair bit of running, I think. Mm. All right, that's a good call. Uh, for me, it's going to be the mental application of our players on the afternoon. Um, yep. you know, yep. We're not going to be able to afford a lapse for a half like we did in the semi-final against Frio. I think if we do that, we'll find them ourselves... Uh, with too much ground to make up, and we can't afford to do that. You know, we've got to be switched on from the start. Um, and let's see how they handle the pressure of, uh, of trying to make a grand final. Good work. Uh, the Danger Man. Maggie, I'll start with you with this one. Ooh, I mean, yeah. As you were saying, there's, there's so many. They're all over the ground for Hawthorne. But uh, I just wonder if, if Sean Burgoyne might come back to Hornus. If he, uh, Ooh. I hate saying that because I still love him as a player, but uh, he, he does turn it on for these type of games. He does. What do you reckon, Rick? Who do you reckon I reckon? 
I reckon you're going to say Jordan Lewis. Jordan Lewis, my friend. Last time, <laughs> the last time I had the bad call of nominating uh, Brad Saul, and uh, well, he's not playing this week, so uh, I'm going to. I'm definitely sticking out Jordan Lewis, and and I, I'm strong on. Uh, I reckon we should be tagging him with uh, Kane Corns this week. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep, you stole my thunder there because I had Jordan Lewis as well. Um, he's had a career year this year um, playing as more of a pure midfielder than he has for the last few seasons. Um, he's just really dominated and is rightly one of the favourites for the Brown, though. He had a very good final against Geelong two weeks back um, and has always been a, a bit of a consistent finals performer. He nearly won Hawthorne the game against us early in the year with uh, 38 touches and two goals. Um, I think he's the one mid that can really cut us apart um, if we're not careful. And the key to winning, Rick. The key to winning, Macca. Good question. What is the key to winning? I forgot. <laughs> I think you're going to say Jordan Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> I had a really good key to winning. I, as you were talking before, I was like, yeah, that's my key to winning. And uh, now it's just gone. It's just got to look. I've, I've, there's so many keys to winning, but um, it's I'm good that you prepare say, for this podcast. It's great. <laughs> I'm always I, I mentally prepare. I don't take notes. I just uh, it's all in there. I just got to get it out sometimes. Filing cabinet gets a bit messy, but well, I'm going to. My key to winning is going to be our defensive forward pressure. I think early in the season, pretty sure it was the Geelong game. They really sh- highlighted. If you can really pressurise Hawthorne, the defenders, with their delivery out going outside of 50, um, that really sort of throws their game style out a little bit. And they were really jaded in that game. So, you know, if we can shock them, and that comes back to our small forwards again as well, and it's not always about them scoring, but those small forwards applying that defensive pressure and trying to lock the ball in uh, is going to be a massive key uh, for us winning the game. Well, I think... uh... It's pretty much fact that the horse get the jitters in the prelim final. So with our run and pressure and pressure and run, we just hit him hard, hard at the body, hard at the ball, like old Jack used to say, and um, knock him off their perch. And uh, yeah, I just want to see us just just go for it. And I think if we do that, we should be okay. Play the game on our terms. Yep. So I remember what my key was now. We need a good start. Yeah. We need a- Definitely. We, need a very, we need a good start. We can't have a bad start either. No. We can't be five goals down and uh, you know in the first quarter or early in the second. We need to really come out firing from the beginning. Yep, yep. for sure. Spot on. Yep. For me, the key to winning is defensive full ground pressure um, on Hawthorne. I think we know that Hawthorne are the most skillful side in the league. They move the ball really quickly and accurately by foot and they rarely miss a target. Um, I think we won earlier in the year by not giving them any space or time to really dispose of the ball effectively. Um, And I think that's going to be the key again this week. Um, We need to pressure them from the start, give them no time to move, and make sure we hit our tackles um, this week as well. All right, boys, who's going to win? um, Port by 13 points. Oh, love it. (laughs) Port by one point. Oh, Oh, no. (laughs) I can't handle that. I will not be able to handle that, Rick. I will be a mess. I'm sitting right next to Macca. (laughs) And I'm locking him in, so he has to stand there and watch. I will be a mess. I will literally shit my pants in the stands, I think, if we uh, if we are that close, I think. It'll be messy. Well, I am going to say I think we are a big chance of winning this game. I think we're going to put everything on the line. Um, but I still think Hawthorne will be too good. They've got too many options, especially up forward. Um, and it's going to be Hawks by 31 points. Ooh. Yeah, well done, mate. No bagging <laughs> out this week. No, I think they'll... Uh, I think it's going to be close for the first sort of three and a half quarters. Then I think they'll probably kick a bit of a backbreaker um, with about five or six minutes to go and they'll they'll kick a couple of extra goals. Now, on to arguably the biggest game this week. Uh, we're in a grand final again against Norwood. You bloody ripper. Yes. Uh, it's going to be a big one on Sunday. Um, we're one win, two loss against them this season so far. Last time we met in a grand final, 
Uh, it was 1999. Uh, we looked to have the game won. Nord came back in the last quarter. Um, there was a, a monster tackle, well, sorry, a, a monster spoil by Tommy Carr, as he used to do back then on Roger James. Um, uh, McGuinness kicked a, a bit of a miracle goal with a couple of minutes left, and we won by seven points. That was the, uh, the Eugene Warrior show, wasn't it? Late it was. in the game. Yep, absolutely. Keep the freak goal from that pocket. We're actually six wins, eight losses in grand finals against Norwood. So I think we need to go some way towards evening up that uh, that ledger a bit. It's not good at all. I'm going. My wife barracks for Norwood. One <laughs> that of the girls is that works. <laughs> one, of the, one of the girls that works for us barracks for Norwood. So uh, you should not hire we, people that barrack for Norwood. Yeah, well they don't. She barracks for Port. So. I nearly fell over last week when Erin told me that she barracks for Norwood. So, Norwood supporting so she, power. She's a Norwood <laughs> supporting power follower. Breaking ground here on the Port Adelaide <laughs> podcast. How is that? How does that happen? Is that the, <laughs> is that the biggest conflict ever? I'm lost for words. It's almost, it's almost as complex as Matt Tarrant, the Bay supporting Port supporter. Mm. Well, we all know he's a port supporting port supporter now, so that's uh, that's he's good. He's converted. He is a convertee. That's it. So, well, what are what are we expecting this game, boys? Because uh, were we all there two weeks ago? I know me and Macca were. Yeah, pop down too. Yep. Yeah. So, I thought Norwood were were way too good for us two yeah. weeks ago. I hate to say it. So, what do we have to do differently? Look, as we said um, at the time, you know, 20 minutes of good footy doesn't win your finals, but, you know, it won us a prelim final last week, so I'm confused. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I think it's going to be a very, very physical game. I think this is, uh, you know, this is going to be up there with uh, the 1990 grand final, I think, in terms of um, uh, having everybody in the crowd against Port Adelaide except for the Port fans this week. I think it's going to be a huge game. It's the biggest grand final, I think, uh, there's been probably since that 99 grand final. Um, statistically, it's a pretty interesting game because Port have the best attack this year. They're first in average score, first in scoring shots, first in inside 50s, and Nord have the best defence. So they're first in lowest score conceded, um, in inside 50s conceded, and scoring shots conceded. So it's really it's going to be a pretty interesting game. And is is John Butcher going to pull on a Guernsey, do we think? I think we need him to. Because yeah, we absolutely definitely. need him to. Yeah. Yeah, all, I, I don't think we can win without him. Yeah. I mean, you, you said that last game, Macca, that we were too short without him. And, you know, all, all puns aside and jokes with, his, with the kicking or whatever, but he's still another tall target that needs yeah. to be accounted for. So. Yeah. You know, and we're missing that at the moment. We're not that tall as it is. So, uh, you know, it's fundamentally important that we get John playing. And it could be one of those breakout games for John, which oh, might help him build some confidence and lead into next year, perhaps. Oh, I'd love to see him kick a bag and win the Jack Audi or something. Yeah. But, um... Look, if he starts well early, if he, gets, uh, if he gets his eye in, takes a big grab early, kicks a goal in the first five or six minutes, I think he'll have the confidence and the momentum um, to have a big game. I think he's definitely got it in him to, to kick five or six in a grand final. Because he was pretty close last week, wasn't he? Is that right? I think he was, yeah. He was a very, very late exclusion last week. Yeah. So what about the would seem to be one of those floodback transition switch sort of teams. Do we really have to sort of lock them down a bit more, play a bit more man-on-man and not allow them to try and get those free players? Look, I think it all comes down to the midfield. Um, Again, we seem to say this every podcast, but it definitely comes down (laughs) to the midfield because, quite simply, we don't have um, a a legitimate ruckman. And you're coming up against Boulderstone, who's the best ruckman in the league, likely to get drafted. He's had uh, something like 700 hitouts this year. Um, He's killed us the three times that we've played them this year. Um, we got lucky in the second game where, where they didn't kick straight and, and we won the game because of that. But, um, you know, we've just got to find a way to be able to compete in that ruck. And who's um, who's their backup ruckman? I forgot his name, but... Brady Dorr. Yeah, I got really sick of seeing him in that last quarter in the second semi. Just 
taking marks. Mark after mark okay. after mark. Yep. Yeah, it was really annoying. It was very, very annoying. This is why um, butchery is so important, so that we actually have someone to kick to up forward and, and they can't just sort of lump their ruckman um, a kick behind the play and watch them take, you know, uncontested marks all, all yeah. evening. So, I mean, well, I, I think that's going to be the key. Were we a bit lazy with our delivery up forward last time we played them as well, though? We we didn't really have I think much we were of a probably a little bit lazy all over the ground, to be honest. Mm. I think I've seen the Maggies play a bit lately live, and they've played that way every single time that I've seen them. They've been sluggish in the first half, they've gone ballistic in the third quarter, and then the last quarter's been up for grabs. Yep. So, yeah, I don't know what to expect. You can't afford to do that in a grand final, especially yeah. against a finals hardened, grand final hardened team like Nord, um, you know, who are going for their third premiership in succession. Um, we've just got to find a way to compete in that midfield. I think we've got the midfield to do it. Um, yep. It's just a matter of, uh, of making sure that uh, they realise everything's on the line this week. So what's going to happen with our emergencies this week? They're flying back, I guess, at the start of the game, I'd imagine. You would think so, yeah. Yeah, because I don't. We wouldn't be holding any of those players playing in the grand final, surely. God no, no. They'll all play. no. Yeah. And uh, I think Mitchell, because he play against Norwood, he'll be a massive in for us. We probably missed his running power in that game. Mm. I thought he was and, huge after half time last week. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, at SAFL level, he's been super. So, um, you know, I mean, they're three players, Newton, Impey, and uh, Mitchell. So they're going to be providing us a lot of run and drive. And uh, hopefully they help us sort of take it to Norwood in the States. Mm. And if we can't play for Port Adelaide, who's going to win it for Port Adelaide? Well, you'd have to think your mate is going to have to have a pretty massive game. Boogerman. Mm-hmm. Yep. Don't you think? I would think so. Yep. Yeah. He's been playing less and, and less in the ruck lately, but I'd love to see him just go in there for the whole game and and start Harvey up forward and and use Harvey as the second ruck. Yeah, that would be nice. I mean, that's what he's recruited for mm. as a uh, as a forward. So it'd be nice to see Shaw, Butcher, and Harvey all up forward with three crummers. Well, you've been going to a fair few Maggie games this year, haven't you? Uh, I've only been to about three or four live, but I've, I guess I watched a fair bit on the on the um, on the TV, and uh, I'm still waiting for that really big breakout Mason Shaw game, Mason Shaw game. Yeah, um, yeah, he's he's tantalising. I think he's got a lot to a lot to like about him, but I just want him to really take the take a game by the scruff of the neck one week. And just mm. say, here I am. Well, he probably hasn't done that at all at a SNFL level yet, has he? I think you, that's a perfect summary. He, he sort of promised but hasn't fully delivered yet. And for all of his criticisms, he, he has still been able to rack up, you know, games where he's kicked a number of goals. So, yeah, it would be it'd be good to see Mason sort of stamp his... Uh, impact or his name on a whole game and I guess Macca that's where you've been saying during the season you know he's not gonna, he's not going to play AFL because he's probably not running hard enough both ways and and so because of that he's probably not getting the full rewards um on the scoreboard in a game yeah but I guess Look, he's for me had two or three big games um he hasn't really been able to keep that up that standard up though so you know everything's mm. on the line this week there is no tomorrow it's a grand final um, you know, he's just got to be out out there and give his best. And is this uh, Tom Logan's last game? I seem to suggest that in the paper today. Did it? Yeah. Well, it's very possible. Um, do we see him getting another contract next year? I, I wouldn't think so at this point. Well, I, would, I yeah. thought he. I thought we'd keep him on. Really? Oh, I would have thought. Mm. I mean, he, he adds a bit of. Ex- Speaks to a son, and uh, you know he was serviceable when he when we needed someone at AFL level. I mean, he's probably I don't couldn't see him going past next year, but 
but maybe we might go past him this year as well. But whatever way, hopefully uh, we go out in a win. It would be a great way for him to go. And I guess he'd have to go back to Glenelg after after that, I guess, wouldn't he? He would, yeah. Well, Poor you... bugger. It's <laughs> that's a, that's a big shame. It's a, a horrible predicament. Obviously, I think Slattery most would be come with his experience and Summerton will be two key figures um, for us on Sunday um, outside of the uh, the AFL players. But their experience will be uh, very much sought after in such a big game. Or does Slattery even play? I don't know. You That's think he question. might not? Well, we have to play all the AFL players. And I think there's enough AFL players in that squad to um, to fill it up without having to play Slattery, to be honest. I think it ends up coming down to Slattery or Cracker with who we right. want to play. Because he's part of a five-man bench which contains also Newton, Impey and Mitchell. And Cracker is the only non-AFL um, listed player named on the ground. Right. So Slattery and even Brueggemann could even miss out. Oh, wow. Jeez, would you, let, would you leave Brueggemann out? Well, he'd, I mean, what do you do? I mean, do you sort of feign an injury to someone like Campbell Heath and or, or Sam Russell or someone like that? I don't know. Well, can you do that? I don't think you can. Do we expect it to be a physical game? Do you think there's going to be a bit of fisticuffs? Yeah, I think Nord will come out pretty hard. Um, that's a, a clash of style too. From, from what I've seen, Nord do like um, do like it a bit uh, a bit physical compared to us. Where once we get run, running and you know just blow teams off the park. So uh, yeah, I don't know. It could be eighty four all over again. Wouldn't that be something? I think they'll be trying to intimidate us a little bit because they've got more experience. They've probably got bigger bodies. Um, they're definitely more uh, finals hardened. Um, I think they'll be they'll be putting it on early, um, you know, with, with a few big bumps. So it wouldn't surprise me if there's a bit of an all-in brawl in the first ten minutes and see if they can intimidate some of our younger players. Nah, really? I don't know if they need to really, especially if they get on top early. They probably wouldn't need if they go behind. I think it's the same as the Hawthorne game. Mm. I think they'll probably use that experience if they if they feel like they're losing momentum of the game at a key passage. Yep. in time. Otherwise, uh, they probably don't need to go that way. I'm hoping for a big breakout game from uh, a couple of our uh, sort of in-between players on the list, I guess. So I'm really hoping to see Benny Newton really stamp his authority on a big game because if he's going to be on our list next year, fingers crossed, he'd be one of those players where we're really hoping to drive to the next level. Um same for Brendan Archie. I, I think he's had a great last two months. He's really stepped it up, and I think he's shown us as a supporter group that he has what it takes at SANFL level and probably to go a little bit further than that as well, and, and Aaron Young. So if those three guys can really uh, raise the bar, because you know Stevie Summonen's going to raise the bar you know, or perform to a high level. You know Sam Gray's going to perform to a high level. You know Kay Mitchell's going to perform to a high level. So if those other three midfielders can really lift their level and their intensity for the game, I think uh, that could be enough to maybe create a bit more quality in the midfield over Norwood. That's it. Well, look, boys, I want a prediction. I want who's going to be best on ground, and I want our leading goal kicker. Uh, best on ground. Um, I'm going to go with, uh, with Youngie. And... Like I think, I think Butch will kick, uh, kick four. Nice. I'm going to go Ben Newton, best on ground. Yep. And I'm going to go Mitch Harvey for three goals. Mm-hmm. And we're going to have a spread of goal kickers. And Port to win by seven points. I like it. I'm going to say uh, Sammy Gray, best on ground. I'm going to say Cameron Hitchcock with four goals will be our leading goal kicker. And I'm going to say Port Adelaide by 22 points because I do not want to see us lose a grand final to Norwood. <laughs> You're going to be sledging the Norwood cheer squad again this week, Macca? Absolutely, I will be. <laughs> <laughs> if I can get to the game in time, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, oh, it's, got, it's going to be on in the stands. 
It's there's going to be so much banter. It's going to be fantastic. Well, yeah. hopefully there's no fifty cuffs in the stands. No, I would I would think not. But you know, this is going to be a pretty brutal clash. Uh, there's going to be a lot of the old, uh, as Tribe said last week, no Alf in the SA NFL supporters. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, let's hope Port Adelaide can win a grand final. Yeah, I think that hill might get a bit rowdy during the day and it might be best to steer clear that way come the last quarter. Mm. Well, there is a there is a lot of animosity again at the SANFL level towards Port Adelaide. Um, a lot of supporters, I think, are feeling a bit aggrieved. Um, you know, it's not fair. We've had an unfair advantage. Um, I do sense there seems to be a bit of hate uh, the force is strong in, in the non-Port Adelaide base. So hopefully it doesn't get too unruly and uh, everyone behaves himself and, and just enjoys it for the game and the spectacle that it should be. Yep. yep. Good call, Rick. Definitely. I think we might uh, leave it there for this evening. What a big weekend it's going to be for Port Adelaide. Huge. And Biggest. hopefully a successful one. Two wins. Two wins. Absolutely. Bring it on. Two wins. Thanks for coming on, MP. It was fantastic Thanks, having you on. Rick, as always, buddy. Pleasure. Come Port Adelaide. Go Power, go Maggie. Go the Port Adelaide Football Club. Couldn't take it. The ball favours the Magpies. Coming through hard there. Number three was Doreen. The Magpies from McGuinness. Torpedo pump. Outside of 50. Oh. Good night, Magpies. <laughs> What a goal by McGinnis. Oh, 